You know, I'm beginning to believe that Disney are experiencing some kind of corporate survivor's guilt for all the money they've made over the years and have resolved to do everything in their power to correct that mistake. Whether it's tanking every single brand under their umbrella, or getting into ridiculous political battles they can never hope to win, or releasing flop after flop that have burned through hundreds of millions of dollars, it feels like the company is conducting its very own Viking funeral on itself while it's still alive. Yeah! And since they've more or less run out of ideas for new things to create, they've decided to pilfer their back catalogue of classic animated movies with a series of soulless, cynical, cash-grab live-action remakes. The problem is that the first few films actually did pretty well at the box office, so they've decided to put the brakes on their latest project with an unnecessary race swap of the main character, rewriting and undermining the core themes of the story to make it acceptable for modern audiences, and hammering it all home with what I can only describe as the single worst collection of sounds ever recorded by human technology in all of history. Remember my song in the swamp when I was like, wah, chicka, wah, wah, chicka, wah. look set to repeat this not-so-winning formula with their next live-action remake, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Oh wait, sorry, Snow White and the Seven Magical Diverse Gender Non-Conforming Vertically Challenged Creatures. Thank you! The thing is, Snow White is a bit of a special one for the Disney Corporation because it was their very first feature-length animated movie made by Walt himself way back in 1937. Taking its inspiration from a 19th century German fairy tale by the Brothers Grimm, it tells the story of a beautiful young woman who gets betrayed by her evil stepmother and eventually takes refuge in a forest with seven dwarfs who give her shelter and protection. And when the evil stepmother comes back to finish the job, they risk their lives to defend her until eventually she gets found by the handsome prince and brought back to life with a true love's kiss. It was a timeless story of betrayal, friendship, loyalty, sacrifice, and the redeeming power of love. And adjusted for inflation, it's still the highest grossing animated film of all time, and one of the most important movies in the history of cinema. Now, call me crazy if you like, but something tells me this remake isn't going to be so well regarded. The problems began early on with the casting of Rachel Zegler as Snow White. Now, why was this a problem, you might ask? Well, the original German folktale describes the character as follows. Schneewittchen hat Lippen rot von einer Rose, Haar schwarz wie Ebenholz und Haut weiß wie Schnee. Or, in less world-dominating terms, Snow White had lips red as a rose, hair black as ebony, and skin white as snow. Skin white as snow. Skin white, white as snow. snow. Sure, okay. I mean, you'd think that Disney might have learned from The Little Mermaid that imposing 21st century American cultural norms by race swapping major characters from popular European fairy tales doesn't tend to go down too well, but whatsoever. As long as they nailed the characterization and stayed true to the themes and ideas of the original story, I'm sure it would all be fine. This Snow White is going to have a modern edge to her, a modern edge to her, a modern edge to her. Cartoon was so focused on her finding true love, and it's really not even in her mind at all in this film. So focused on becoming the leader and how to find her own agency. <laughs> <laughs> of course she does. Because why have a story about the redeeming power of love when we can focus instead on the only thing that truly matters in life? You. Don't you see? It's about what you want. What's best for you. What makes you happy. And everyone else can go fuck themselves. Now where have I heard this sentiment before? It's also updated with the current times, you know? It's not just all about a boy, you know? It's all about what she wants for herself. Take away, away, take away. Jesus, it's like a bunch of robots that have all been given the latest software download at the same time. You know, I love how Disney are still trying to sell this idea of strong, self-actualized female protagonists pursuing their life goals without the help of a man as if it's some crazy new idea that's never been tried before, instead of, you know, the plot of literally every single movie and TV show they've made in the past 10 years. This isn't new or inventive anymore, and you're not impressing anyone with this shit. In fact, all you're really doing is taking away timeless elements elements of the original story and replacing them with a vacuous, shallow, and ultimately meaningless facade of female empowerment. You don't need a man. You don't need love. You don't need attachments to other people, in fact. You just need to be strong, be empowered, be a leader, and buy more of our products. 
I mean, okay, maybe the main character is a bit of a bust, but what about the dwarves? I mean, really, they were as much of a collective protagonist in the original movie as Snow White herself. They went through a real character arc together. They learned to work together, to take advantage of their unique skills, to risk their lives for someone else, and ultimately they learned the value of friendship, loyalty, and sacrifice. Oh wait, they're not actually dwarves anymore. Not since the towering intellect of Peter Dinklage weighed in on the film and decided that the portrayal of dwarves in the original movie was backwards and insulting. Are you serious? Peter, mate, you understand that those characters were actually the fantasy species of dwarf and not actual humans afflicted with dwarfism, right? Either way, the result was the same. Someone was angry and things had to change. The dwarves were shit-canned and changed into magical forest creatures, whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean, and seven roles that could have been played by dwarf actors were basically erased. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Honestly, you'd think that Peter would have been the bigger man and given his fellow actors a chance, but I guess not. Maybe he's got an elevated sense of his own importance or something. <laughs> so let's consider what we've got so far with this thing. A classic European fairy tale about a young woman with skin as white as snow, played by an actress of Colombian descent, so that everyone can see themselves in 19th century German folklore. A story about the search for true love that's no longer about true love, in order to avoid offending the lonely middle-aged feminist that will never actually watch the movie in the first place. And supported by seven dwarves that are no longer dwarves in order to avoid offending Peter Dinklage. Fuck. But hey, at least it'll probably look good, right? I mean, these live-action movies cost hundreds of millions of dollars, so you can bet it's gonna be up there on screen for all to see. <laughs> Now, I have to admit, I didn't react to these pictures at first because, like a lot of people, I naturally assumed that they had to be fake. I mean, they've got to be right. There's no way a big budget movie could possibly look this shit. And for a few hours, at least, it seemed like I was right. Then the confirmation came back from a Disney spokesman that they were, in fact, real photos from the movie set. My god, they're real. <laughs> I just can't anymore, man. This right here is the decline of Western culture summed up in a single image, and this movie is the literal personification of everything wrong with modern entertainment. It's what happens when you're so desperate to showcase your progressive credentials and conform to the endlessly growing list of contradictory demands and nonsensical restrictions that you end up tying both of your creative hands behind your back. And what you ultimately produce is just as soulless, joyless, and pointless as the people you're desperately trying to win approval from. Because here's the thing, whenever you ask them what they want next, no matter how far you've already gone or how much you've sacrificed to try to appease them, the answer will always be the same. More. No matter how many concessions you make, how many problematic elements you mercilessly hack away from your story, how many progressive characters and themes and mindless talking points you awkwardly shove into your narrative, it will quite simply never be enough. There's always going to be another point of outrage, another demand for change, another rule that can't be broken, another piece of your creative freedom you're asked to give up, another piece of cultural heritage to be rewritten for a modern audience that doesn't exist. And you know what? They're fucking welcome to it. If this is the kind of sterile, loveless, charmless, creatively bankrupt propaganda that you choose to serve up, then best of luck to you. Because if the reactions online are anything to go by, you're absolutely gonna need it. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now!